getting to the point, but taking the scenic route to get there. This is the Bottom Line Podcast from 100.7 The Score. It's the Bottom Line on 100.7 The Score and 107thescore.com. Hey, the Benchmark Hotline is open for you, 806-771-0973, or you can keep hitting us up on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Get your questions in now for Grill Sneed. That'll be at 1245, along with a Monday edition of Kaylee's Dailies and a secret word of the day, a chance for you to win $10,000. We'll have Action Jackson's play of the day here momentarily. Clint Scott with Chris Sneed and Jackson Frazier taking care of us. Uh, if you are looking for results from the Big 12, other than your Red Raiders 48-10 to dominant victory, uh, TCU comes from behind, and again, second week and, in a row. Yeah, and TCU was getting worked in this game. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what happened. I, I turned it off for just a second, and I come back, and they're winning by 10. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what the heck just happened here? Yeah, they win the Battle of the Purple 38-28, to 28, that game at TCU. Now, Adrian Martinez, I don't know what the full I, injury did he get was, hurt? but he, he gets knocked out. And it's early because Will Howard led him to some touchdowns. If you remember that name, you'll remember a couple years ago in Manhattan yeah. that he came, he comes in and it's a nightmare. Yeah. Uh, and then I think even for a couple of drives or maybe just a drive, he got knocked out and they were down to their third string, but I believe he finished that game. But uh, still the backup led them to that lead. And all of the TCU Horn Frogs and Max Duggan and I guess I mean congrats to Sonny Dykes. He's done a terrific job with that program early. Yeah, at some point you have to tip your cap. Yeah. I mean you I mean, we can say product of your schedule, kinda of like Kansas, but you know, when you go off and you and you, you beat Oklahoma State and then you beat Kansas State right behind that, at some point you just gotta tip your hat and salute and move on, as Chuck would say. So uh, and at this point now that they've gotten past Kansas State, if they're not in the Big Twelve championship game, then it I mean, it'll be a disappointment. I, I think they'll get got by somebody. and get I mean, got. The, the, the got Red got. Raiders come to go to TCU, and if the Red Raiders are playing hot still in a couple weeks, I like your chances. It's going to be interesting because that's going to be as much of a home field advantage mm-hmm. of you. I mean, but you played there with a home field advantage before and gotten worked. Mm-hmm. I mean, you you had you played there with a crowd that was that was two thirds Red Raiders mm-hmm. and got beat 80-20-21. And you got beat um, with a second down field goal. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, you you figured out some interesting ways to lose there. I mean, and it's not just you know Cliff, Tuberville, you know uh, Wells, Spike. <laughs> I mean, I mean, we lost to TCU the year we went to the Cotton Bowl. We had to we could have won the conference outright. Went down there and got got beat by a bad TCU team and ended up tying in a five way tie for the conference championship. And we got to go to the Cotton Bowl at a six and five record because we were the school that hadn't been there in the longest. Mm-hmm. Well, and and now you're looking at TCU and and the biggest plus for them, as you mentioned with Oklahoma State and Kansas State, two of the other four teams that I think are seriously competing and finding a way into the Big Twelve championship game as of right now, uh, just leaderboard wise. Well, Texas just got another L. From mm-hmm. Oklahoma State, and you have the tiebreaker now over Oklahoma State and Kansas State. Uh, talking about a big stretch, they were in one, and all they've done is taken care of business. Oklahoma State picks off Quinn Ewers three times. And speaking of Four come from behind wins, it looked like Texas, Texas in the first half, and Texas in the second half, night and day. Yeah. Credit to adjustments from Mike Gundy, but night and day. Yeah, that was a. Uh... Because they were kind of dominating that game, rolling over the over the uh, the Cowboys, and and um, I'm not sure what they what they did, what they changed, but boy, they started they started moving the ball. Well, and I think Oklahoma State finally, because I mean, Bijan Robinson ultimately got his, Roshan Johnson mm-hmm. ultimately got his, and I think they finally, at least, you know, it's the old saying, you can't stop them, you can only hope to contain them. Well, I think they finally started to contain them, yeah. and Quinn Ewers throwing the ball downfield showed a lot of weakness. It was also what his first time starting in a truly hostile environment? Yeah, but he's got a Maserati. He's got a Maserati, <laughs> yeah. So and a million dollars yeah. plus more. I don't think he's too upset, but the Texas yeah. Longhorns fan base. You know, so I was sitting have there. Have nightmares of Jason Taylor the second. I was sitting with a guy watching that game in the pavilion, and we were talking about Quinn Ewers and the fact, yeah, Quinn Ewers making three million dollars. Yeah, but what's his left tackle making? 
Right. You know, and so if if you're blocking for a guy that's throwing a bunch of interceptions and he's making $3 million and you're not getting anything, you don't have an NIL deal, what's your motivation to, to keep that guy upright? Mm -hmm. What's your motivation to stay in front of this guy and, and, and block him? It's like, no, nah, why don't you go get Pretty Boy back there? Get the Maserati guy. Hey, when you're there, get the keys to the Maserati for me. <laughs> yeah, next time, can I drive it? Yeah, you can drive it. All right. All right, next time yeah. I'll block the defensive end. Uh, all right, Jackson, take it away. Four receivers on the left side bunched Ooh. up. Now the throw goes left side upfield. It's caught by White. He's got it in Mountaineer territory at the 30. It's a foot race to the 15. Touchdown, Red Raiders! Xavier White caught it on the near sideline, uh, just inside midfield, and then after the catch headed towards the hash marks and then just sprinted from that point forward the rest of the way for a 55-yard touchdown to open the scoring in the second half. That was – so you mentioned uh, – remind me, at what point did you say you knew the game was over? No, that's, that's second drive. Second drive. Yeah, no, I said this game is over. So I was slightly more hesitant. Yeah. Uh, as you go into uh, ending the half, and then you are, are looking at – you go off of kind of the, the blundered fourth down attempt, really yeah. the only one that you had in West Virginia is driving. They're trying to make it 17-10. to 10. And, uh, they, and then you have the yeah. huge pick from pick. Rabbit. Yeah. And then you start off th – this was the official moment that he just played uh, there on that 55-yard touchdown pass to Xavier White that I was like, okay, <laughs> I can hear the nails being – pegged into the coffin, and you started off that drive, what, with the Rashad Williams interception yeah. mm -hmm. and immediately turned it into points. Yeah. After the second drive, because remember, thinking back to the second drive, you already you already gone for it, what, three times on fourth down, four times? Mm -hmm. At that point, you had more, you know, conversions on fourth downs than they had first downs yeah. in the game. I think it was four to zero. And at that point, you look at their sideline, they didn't want any more. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, you could tell those guys didn't want anymore because it was yeah. almost like, hey, these guys aren't going to quit. Yeah. I mean, I just, I kind of like, eh. And that's where, again, that's where I thought, okay, West Virginia right now. And again, you look at the Big 12 and just mentioned, won all the close games that they've had, mm -hmm. uh, not just with you, but I mean, throughout the conference, West Virginia was just coming from one where mm -hmm. it was a dog fight the entire time. Uh, it's not that they're not used to it, and they've been in every single game again other other than the one against the Longhorns. And I'm looking at it as they try to make it 17-10. to 10. Boy, this yep. is set up for West Virginia to get back into this yep. game. They're going to start the ball, start with the ball in the second half. And in and, and years past, you know, yeah. under Matt Wells, that would have happened. Mm -hmm. I think the kids would have just said, ah, okay, well, we'll give up this touchdown. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, this game started off with Tech. Walking over there. It's as if Joey McGuire walked right over on the other side of the field and just punched Neil Brown in the mouth. Okay? And then Neil Brown got up off the ground, and Joey McGuire was walking back to his sideline and said, you know what? I'm going to do that again. He turned right around and did that again and punched him right back in the mouth again. Said, you stay down there. I mean, seriously, I, I think it was uh, – I guess it was during Jamie's question of the day on Friday. We were talking about, hey, like, what do you want to see? What, you know – points to it to a victory what do you want and i threw out tight ends with tight ends were involved yeah especially on fourth down. i mean mason like, Tharp, what do hey, they do the with way, mason tharp hey, and he's dragging hey people? mason tharp he said hey guys just get off my <laughs> back and i'm gonna take this thing i'm gonna take this thing from the 17 yard line down to the two yeah okay and y'all are gonna ride with me yeah and then i'm gonna get up and i'm gonna put my in a wheelbarrow and so wheel it back to the sideline <laughs> so go ahead and check that box off uh, one for me was, hey, can you stop the run? Because the one yeah. time that they got dominated, their running uh, game was stopped, and then they could get after J.T. Daniels. Yeah. Shut down the running game completely. Completely. They and were, then made yeah. him uncomfortable, led to three interceptions. Yeah. The thing about this, and, and you know, I know there's people who kind of gripe and complain about the going for it on fourth down, but here's what going for it on a fourth down and, and being successful six out of seven times did to those guys. Mm -hmm. Those guys changed the way they were going to play the game. They wouldn't have they wouldn't have gone for it on fourth down so many times. Mm -hmm. They they took chances they didn't want to take because yeah. we had to put we had put them in that situation. You know, we being me as a Red Raider fan, you know, and a guy that kind of 
has has shaken hands with Joey McGuire. I'm not on the team. <laughs> He's, I get the, to wee. The I get that, the, hey, Joey, go for it. I get to wee the Texas Tech Red Raiders. <laughs> so I'm going to wee the Red Raiders. So it's work. I'm not on the team. But I, I would just say it like that. We forced them to change what they wanted to yeah. do on on Saturday, and they they went for it on fourth down a couple of times when they didn't want to, and they got it a couple of times. But I mean, they were forced to do things they did not want to do, mm-hmm. and that was that's all you have to do. You 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 change their will. Uh, this on the chat line from Metalhead just found a stat that says everything Tech uh, had more yak. Then West Virginia had total passing yards. Also, get this, Big 12 Newcomer of the Week, Baron Morton. He is the Big 12 Newcomer of the Week. And you want to know how you had a good day? Uh, you pull out an award like that, and then West Virginia wins the special teams award from their punter, uh, Oliver Straw, because you saw him a bunch. <laughs> well, that's pretty pretty tasty morsel right there. Uh, Jason Taylor from Oklahoma State gets the Defensive Player of the Week, and Spencer Sanders gets Offensive Rounding out the conference awards in football this week. It'll be Grill Sneed when we come back. Get your questions in on the Exploring Center chat line. Also have a secret word of the day and a Monday edition of Kaylee's Dailies. All that and more right here on 100.7 The Score. Bringing you the truth or something like the truth. This is the Bottom Line Podcast from 100.7 The Score. Bottom line, you've got us on 100.7 The Score and 107thescore.com. It is a Monday edition. Hit us up on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Thoughts, comments, everything welcomed there. Uh, plenty there already. We'll have take versus take coming up in 15 minutes. Jackson has the questions. Then at 145, it's Jamie's question of the day. Clint Scott with Jackson Frazier taking care of us, and Jamie Lint, author of Jamie's Question of the Day, also author of a book yet to be titled, but we had a good one sent in from Raider's Dad, also taking title suggestions for Jamie's <laughs> book about Chuck. Raider's Dad says, Colony Life, Chuck Hines on navigating the flat bases of life, love, and do 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 mm. Or do do to do Oh. Because that's like every song uh, lyric in the world. That's probably right. Like... Um, like for example, if you ask Chuck, uh, Hey, have you ever sung happy birthday? And he would say, yeah, I know. I know all the words to that. And we would say, okay, what is it? And he would go happy to do, to do John Jamer. (laughs) And it's Jacob, not Jamer. Love it so much because that is the one where he actually he doesn't actually do the do 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 on that one. He just has different J names every single time. <laughs> Jeff, Jonathan, Jackson, Jamie, Jake. Do 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 do. His name is do do do. Gentlemen, we picked some games on Friday for blind projections. Probably not very well. I'll tell you what. It was un- unfortunate. As I was going through the order, because I had my hopes up very high until we got to the end. Uh, if you've kept up with us, Jackson has had a, a pretty close ultimate, or, or I guess altogether record-wise. Uh, but if you're going wins coming into this week, Jackson was four and one. He's won four. I was one and four. Jamie zero oh and five. Looking for his first win. But I can't really talk because I've just had the one. So, well, that's and a large amount more. Well, and you you've been in contention. Uh, it's come down to the tiebreaker a few times. <clears throat> yeah, it did not this week. So what you're saying, if I was playing on the JV, I would dominate. Is that what you're suggesting? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Get that kid a sticker mm-hmm. on his helmet. Mm-hmm. Uh, just for the JV, though. Uh, 14th ranked Syracuse played at Clemson. Clemson was a 13 and a half point favorite. Syracuse led for the bulk of this game. Clemson finished it out with their backup quarterback, not due to injury, just because DJ Ugalele was playing Ugalele. And I, I'm just not sold on that dude. Me neither. I thought he was taking strides, but the fact that they have a quarterback controversy in year. 
three now for him. And at the end, you're having uh, you know head head ball coach going now. There's he's our starter. Well, if he's your starter, and he's like, oh, he's our starter. He's our leader. If he's that, Dabo, why did you put him in, or why did you take him out? I I I have to think that there is a mess brewing for Clemson because the guy who came in is a high star athlete, Clay uh, Klubnik, I think. Uh, that they brought in to be the future for Clemson as well. So, I don't know. They're still undefeated, though. Yep. They found a way. Got the uh, job done. Clemson wins 27-21. to 21, However, did not cover. I start out with the first point. The law firm of J&J picked Clemson foolishly. It's about the only time we'll get to say that. Next game we pick, 24th ranked Mississippi State went to Alabama. Alabama was a 21-point favorite. Jamie and myself, we took the Crimson Tide. Jackson took Mississippi State. Bama won 30-6. to six. Still no points, Jackson. Man, rough. I have two. Jamie has one. Don't worry, Jackson. It's about to get a lot better for you. UCLA at Oregon. Oregon was a six-point favorite. I was the lone person who took UCLA. J&J took Oregon. The Ducks won 45-30. to 30. Jamie ties it up with me with the lead with two. Jackson gets his first point. Then Ole Miss went to Baton Rouge to take on the Bayou Bengals of LSU. LSU was a two-and-a-half point favorite. LSU took it to him, 45-20. to 20. Jamie and myself took Ole Mississippi. Did not work out for us. Suddenly, we're all tied at two with Jackson's pick of the Tigers. Kansas at Baylor. Baylor was a nine-and-a-half point favorite. A uh, game closer than what the ending score would suggest. <laughs> I'm going to say it. It's 28-23, third and two, and Kansas choked. <clears throat> Baylor wins 35-23 to there in Waco. <laughs> Congratulations, you two, for taking the Bears. You both are tied with the lead, three to my two points, crying. Why'd you laugh when I started to say that? It just kind of sounded like you were making excuses no. for Kansas. <laughs> it was closer than this. We would have had Jalen Daniels. It would have been different. Does he play defense? No. Neither does Kansas. You should. <laughs> I haven't made a single Yankees joke all day except for the double play one, which was hilarious. 20th ranked University of Tejas traveled to Stillwater to take on the 11th ranked Oklahoma State Cowboys. Texas was a head-scratching six-and-a-half point favorite. We all said, no way. We were all correct. Oklahoma State not only covered, but wins the game 41-34. to 34. Thanks in part to Quinn Ewer's beautiful three interceptions, including back-to-back -back drives to end the ball game. 19 out of 49. Good grief. Total quarterback. 19 out of 49. Like 47. It's awful. And it was, you know. That is really bad. I'm pretty sure 18 Did... of those 19 completions were two yards from the line of scrimmage. Man. Hmm. They should have given him more in that NIL deal. <laughs> or if it's uh, what Sneed and I said earlier, UIL deal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we all took Oklahoma State. You both have four points. I have three points as we move into the seventh and eighth game. Kansas State traveled to TCU. TCU was a three and a half point favorite. We all said, Horn Frogs roll. Horn Frogs had to come back, but they did indeed roll. 38 to 28 was the final. We all get a point. It's five to four. How lucky is TCU? They keep catching teams at the right time, but it's, it's like tip of the cap because they keep winning these games. Sure, and they and then this one they fought back, but and ended up facing three different quarterbacks in yeah. the game. Yeah, it's uh, and, and, and you know, you look at when they caught Oklahoma. I mean, Oklahoma still, no one's really shaking in their boots right now, but I think caught them at the worst possible time. Uh, I know also. Speaking, their quarterback gets knocked out of the game now because of a dirty hit. But uh, TCU, kudos to them. Sonny Dyke doing a great job, I think, lining up for probably conference coach of the year, depending on what happens. But they've also sure. played the toughest, for the most part, the toughest part of their schedule. Not going to be still Venables? Have you and the Longhorns. <laughs> I don't think it's going to be Brett Vulnerables, no. <laughs> Final game we picked was, of course, the game played here at the Jones. Texas Tech was a six-and-a-half-point favorite. Uh, Jamie picked the Red Raiders to win, but West Virginia to cover. Jackson and I picked Texas Tech 
to cover and win. It was, of course, 48 to 10. Jackson gets another win with six points. Jamie and I tied with five. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. I can tell how sincere that meant. Jackson's total on the season, 28 and 20. I am 25 and 23. Jamie bumps his up to 22 and 26. Gaining ground. <laughs> I'm above 300 now. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> You're gaining ground, though, little by little. Man, I do so well on the morning show. Well, you're just tired by this yeah, point. You've, AK, been a, you've been awake a long time by the time you get to us. A.K.A. the JV game. But, you know, <laughs> I'm like a quadruple A hitter. I just can't take that next step to the big leagues here on the bottom line. I mean, but just think about it. I mean, you've been drained, you know, tr trying to help, trying to make excuses. Really, your picks were a lot closer than 35 to 23. I mean, sorry, wrong thing. Wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just kidding. Well, we really have been fairly neck and neck. But Jackson, with his fifth win of the year, congratulations. He can't get a double win today because he will have the take versus take questions. That'll be here at 1.30 in five minutes. Coverage tonight. We'll have the high school fan zone right here on 100.7. The score at 7 o'clock. It's Estacado followed by Coronado at 7.30. Over on Double T 97.3, it is the Cowboys hour as they look back at their win of the Lions over the Lions. And then look ahead to their matchup with the Bears. Monday Night Football between the Broncos and... Speaking of a JV schedule. That's not correct. Lions, then the Bears. That is that is wrong on the board. It's not it the is. Broncos at Chargers. That was last week. Somebody's falling down. Some, on the job. Who's it's, fired? Who's fired? It's the we'll do it live. Uh, Bears and somebody. Yeah, who cares? We do. Listen on Double T 97.3. Back with more next on 100.7 The Score. Bringing you the truth or something like the truth. This is the Bottom Line Podcast from 100.7 The Score. That music means it's time for the fastest growing game show in the world. Take versus take. We do it right here on the Bottom Line at 1.30 every single weekday. Listen to 100.7 The Score on 100.7thescore.com. Your competitors today, your gladiators, Clint Scott, myself, he is Jamie Lent, the one and only Lil Crouton, your question extraordinaire, Jackson Frizier. I tell you, the quarter backup quarterback here, looking exquisite today, my friend. Thank you. On Friday, y'all said it wasn't looking as good, so today I just had to come in no, there was top of the line. Focus sure. up after the weekend, sure. Yeah. It was Watch film. It was kerfuffled on Friday. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't say mangled. Kerfuffled is the no, correct word. No, kerfuffled. Yeah. It was all over the place. Yeah. Like too many ladies had run their hair through it. <laughs> too many. Or or a hood had been on it, yeah, but also or, that one. Or there was a chipmunk that ran through there. How many chipmunks do you get that run through there, Jackson? At least like two a year. <laughs> uh, are they also rangers? Yes. Little Chippendale joke there for you guys. Never mind. All right, take it away, Jinx. Okay. I didn't get it. My bad. So, Clint, <laughs> if all the animals in the world could talk, what kind of animal do you think you'd get along with the best? <laughs> oh, man, it's hard for me not just to say, like, a really good-natured dog that, like, the type that, like, when you get up, they get up. Like, oh, what are we doing? Oh, we're going to the fridge? Sweet. I was thinking of going to the fridge, too. Good idea, bro. Or like, oh, man, you leaving the house? I wanted to leave the house. You want to put the leash on me? Sweet, let's go. Like, oh, you're, you're going to take a car ride? I wanted to take a car ride. Let's go get a pup cup. Let's do it. Like, that seems like I would just get along with him. Uh, also, if it's my real dog, he does that. And the other side, too, just like doesn't talk. I'm going to just snore a bunch because he's asleep. So you need to get both sides. I mean, that's like best roommate ever, right? Mm-hmm. Cheers you on for whatever. Mm -hmm. Are you going to use the restroom? Yeah, I'll go in there too. Okay, this one, can you like leave, please? <laughs> this is a me time thing. Mm -hmm. Jamie, what about you? I think I'd get along with the laughing hyenas the best 
I mean, it would be just like doing this show, you know, like Clint says something funny and I'm the laughing hyena over here. So, I mean, I would, everything I said to these guys, they would laugh at. They would, they would make me feel good about myself, you know, cause like, man, my jokes are awesome. You're a stand-up comedian. <laughs> so what's the deal with this scar fella trying yeah. to take over yeah. the Pride Lands? Yeah, I think we'd get along. Yeah. That's a funny answer. I'm going to go with Jamie because, uh, you know, when you think of Jamie and the animals he would hang out with, the hyenas yeah. are usually the first the on my list. dead last. <laughs> <laughs> I think I might have asked this one, and if I have, I have a backup one. But, Jamie, list off your top three cheeses. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> no, you haven't. I was really hoping you hadn't. It was one that I'd won on. I wasn't going to tell you that we'd done it before. I was just going to have the same answer. <clears throat> Cheeseburger, macaroni and cheese, and grilled cheese. I mean, like, kinds of cheese. <laughs> he knows. <laughs> no. He knows. Um, you should stick with that as your answer. American and cheddar and I don't know. What's what's another one that's just the same as those? No. Blue. No. Anything but blue. Anything that doesn't smell. It has to not smell. Just one with like a bunch of syllables I'm trying to think of that just Pepper Jack. Completely left my cheese brain. Pepper Jack. It's my third one. Go ahead, Clint. I bet he picks all the smelly ones. Uh, no, actually, Pepper Jack is my favorite cheese. Had it on a sandwich last night. Mm-hmm. Pepper Jack, number one. Uh, second is mozzarella. You put it on pizza. I mean, it comes in stick form. It's fantastic. It's its own appetizer. And then number three, underrated, is Whiz. The cheese Whiz. Delicious. Mm. That was like a Kansas vacation treat. Go to Walmart before you go to the hotel. The motel, hotel. Get yourself some cheese whiz and some Ritz. Highfalutin. Saying whiz almost makes me want to give Jamie the point, but I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna give it to Clint. That's like the one thing you shouldn't give a nickname, right? You shouldn't like ah, where's the whiz? I don't have that, sir. Stop asking for that. We keep kicking you out, and you I still keep think, coming back. I still think my first answer was the best one. That was good. Mm-hmm. 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 Was it burger, pizza, and grilled? Mm-hmm. Mm. No, it was burger, macaroni. Oh, and macaroni and. Yes. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. All right, so we're all tied up. Clint, if you could do one change, anything, take something out, add something to the Texas Tech jerseys for any sport, what are you doing? Ooh, take anything out? Or adding whatever, like just making any kind of change you would like to any of the sports team's jerseys. Mm. And you don't, don't you dare put those buckle shoes on Raider Red. I was going to say Pilgrim shoes on Raider Red. So everybody knew, you know, he's just a really nice guy. Um, I would say, and this really isn't changing, but I, I would just use this more. Um, I'm, I'm not really, and of course I'm, haven't been around for the whole time that this has been an argument, right? You have the how the double T is now and then the flat double T. I really do like when they go with the retro retros and they have that flat D- double T look. It looks so good to me. I would honestly use that more, but I have no issue with how the logo is now by any means. But I do when it like they you see this on social media or whatever, someone is showing the differences. I really do like the flat double T. I would put that more on things I would use that more like be cool to see that on the court every once in a while something like that I felt like we just got the four corners offense there I mean it was like we used a lot of words while we were trying to figure out what we wanted to say we came up with something at the end three hour show (laughs) just below the neck the V area there where it comes together I would like a double T right below there Okay, I think that would look cool on all of our jerseys, right below the little V spot there. Yeah. I thought you were gonna say a zipper because you were going to your zipper when I was watching, and I was like, "Ooh, point me." 
Yes, I want our football jerseys to have zippers in them. You know what I want to see? I want to see more basketball snap-off pants. Just rip. I'm ready, coach. Okay. Another guy from the colony, apparently. <laughs> well, you have stuff underneath, like... Oh, you have two pairs of pants on? Yeah, that's super cool. It's yeah, it's, super it's called cool. warm-up pants. <laughs> it's not it's not people of Walmart here. Two pairs of pants, yeah. Who does that? Basketball players. People who play toilet tag. <laughs> I'm ready to go into toilet tag, coach. Pop, 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 pop. <laughs> so Jamie, yours was with every sports team? Oh, I thought we were just talking about tech football jerseys. I was just wondering, it can be any either. Yeah, I want it on the football team, or on the football jerseys. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Okay, yeah. now I'm going to give the point to Jamie. That sounds like you asked, you gave him the route, and he just answered that, thinking it would get him the point. No, I didn't know what he, I didn't and know if he meant all teams. Or there was yeah, no, I want football. I want to go back to the film, I'm throwing a flag, challenge flag. I think about it, I think it would be fine with basketball. I don't think it would, I, I don't think it would work for baseball. I think it would work for basketball too. Basketball doesn't have a V though; it's a it's rounded. <clears throat> so really, that clearly shows I was talking about football. You're going for some sort of weird zipper, Mister F- Four Corners offense. <laughs> hey, it worked for a long time, you know, so it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> it was like it was like. Jackson, when you were in school and <clears throat> you had a a question to answer on a test, and it had to be like a hundred words or more, and so you would start out by like re- restating the question. You you'd knock off like twenty two words just like that, right? If I had to choose somewhere to go, I would say the question- I would go to Utah. Utah is probably a state that I would like to go. When asked places that I like to go, I say Utah. Utah is a state, a state that I would like to go. You know where I'd like to go? Utah. Boom, a hundred words. We have no idea. Eat it, essay. Like to the essay. You know, I'm not just you know taking shots. <laughs> That got weird. <laughs> hey, congrats on your win, Jamie. Thanks. Maybe. You both. I'm the only one without a win today. You Actually, I've fuck. won because I'm here with both of you. Now he's 0 for 3. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, yes. This on the Exploring Center chat line. Take versus take. Point shaving and fraud. Yeah, fraudulent is exactly what this was. This is a shame. We will go to the league. There will be fines handed out. There will be justice for Viking. Come on, all of us. Justice. 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 You guys aren't joining in. Whatever. Back with more next on 100.7 The Score. Bringing you the truth, or something like the truth, this is the Bottom Line Podcast from 100.7 The Score. It's take versus take. No, it's not. I got thrown off by the music. I'm still flustered. A tragedy is what happened on take versus take. Congratulations, though, to Jamie on his win that will forever have an asterisk. Right beside it, it's the bottom line right here at 100.7 The Score and 107thescore.com. Clint Scott with Jamie Lint and Jackson Frazier taking care of us. It'll have an asterisk because it's the first time we've been racially insensitive during take versus take. I was talking to a paper, not a person. <laughs> it probably wasn't the first time. Uh, we get this on the chat line. Uh, Tyler said, go Strohs. Sooner in Lubbock asked us this question. Scale of 1 to 10, how confident are you with the matchup with Baylor? Four point seven. Out of 10 or out of 5? Well, you said scale of 1 to 10. Did I say 1 to 10? You did. I'm really upset. It's really... Thrown me for a loop. I didn't have a loop until now, Jamie. And no. it has been thrown. Okay. I'm so sorry. What can we do to raise that for you by Saturday? 
Jackson and I, what can we do? I don't think anything. Mm. Yeah. I think you got a shot. I, mm. I think it's close to a 50-50 game. It's, I mean, maybe unfair. Have you but, seen a line? Uh, the early line was Tech one and a half. I don't know if that's moved already or not, but I doubt it. Um, in Tech's favor, of course. And I just think that you, one, have shown more in a tougher schedule than, than what Baylor has. And if I look at how the two squads have played recently, especially now this, is, this isn't fair because you're just coming off of a dominant 48-10 win, and there's only so much you can take from that. But uh, I, I, I flat out think you're playing better than Baylor is right now. I do. I'm not incredibly impressed with their offense. Their defense is good, but it's not the Baylor defense of last year. True. Part of it, too, is you have them here at the Jones. Like, I feel I'm not trying to feel overconfident with the Red Raiders. Again, you can lose on, on, on what's left in your schedule. We've said it 100 times. You can win every game. You can lose every single one of them. I just I, I do really like your matchup with the Bears. Okay. Having more people healthy also helps that. Big thing mm-hmm. from Saturday – Seemed like he came out pretty unscathed on that front, too. Yeah, appeared that way. Mm-hmm. But the off- offensive line showed a step in the right direction in that game mm-hmm. Saturday as well. That being said, I've been really impressed with West Virginia's defense all season long, so you mm-hmm. kind of took advantage of a, of a bad defense, and also the, the turnovers were a big factor as well for you. I guess my the biggest thing is, yeah, you, you were hoping you were going to be able to put up a lot of points because, like you mentioned, it looked like you were going to have that available to you, but then the defense did what they did against the West Virginia offense that had been fairly potent this mm-hmm. year, and that's the most inept the Mountaineers have looked on that side of the ball all year. Yeah. So. Mm. Hey, got a question Jackson, what's your what's your uh, what's your level of confidence? Did you give a, a number, Clint? I did not. Uh, okay. I just said I was really confident. I would say I'm a seven and a half. Wow. I think I'm pushing eight right now. Hmm. I just feel really good. It was a really good. The team just looked really good. Morton had control. That's good, Jackson. Thank you. <laughs> Defense looked good. It's really good. Punting looked good. It was He's all good. doing the essay thing too. And time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the bell does not dismiss you. I I dismiss you. Hmm? Jamie, you have a question of the day for us. I do. Jamie's question of the day on 100.7 The Score is presented by Bizarre Solutions. Call them today for a free cybersecurity audit. All right, Clint Jackson and our fine listening audience, I want you to give me an MVP for Saturday's win over West Virginia. Who is it? Mm. Boy, that's a that's a tough one. I want I want to go defensively just because of how dominant you were on that side of the ball. Uh, I thought Rabbit had the biggest play uh, of the game that really shifted it when West Virginia was trying to knock it to 17 to 10 headed into half and he had that big pick. Uh, also had a lot of tackles. I think he finished with uh, seven if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, you could pick anybody from the linebacking core or the, or the defensive line that just caused havoc. I mean, Xavier White was fan- This is a tough one as you look at because Xavier White was fantastic. Taj Brooks had his season high. I think I'm going to stay with Rabbit, though. I think part of it was... Everybody had big plays in this, but to me, he had the defining play of the game that turned it, and then from there on out, it was all all Red Raiders, and it, for the most part, was at that point, too. Um, but you look at West Virginia again, trying to make it 17-10. to 10, They would have started out with the ball and would have had the first sign of momentum that they would have felt all game, and he took it away. So, yeah. I'm going to go with the offensive line. I think they played really well especially with how they have been playing recently. Uh, Morton only got sacked once. Some of those might have been saved from him throwing some balls away, but still sure. only sacked once. <clears throat> and then the running game like blew up today, or Saturday. 
had almost or 200 plus three touchdowns. I think it was just a good day for the offensive line when they've been had a few iffy weeks. I think Jackson has the right answer here. That was not what I was going to go with, but I think he's 100% right because I was going to go with Baron Morton. Okay? Mm-hmm. I thought he did a terrific job of running the yeah. offense and um, getting you where you needed to be uh, up and down the field, Was didn't force things, missed a couple throws to the outside, but I thought he was really, really good. Um Looked like he was able to read that West Virginia defense and make the right decisions more times than not. So I thought he was terrific. But when you factor in all the good things that you did in the passing game with Baron, Xavier, and others, and then you factor in how good you were in the run game with over 200 yards rushing, Taj with 107 on the day, it's hard to not give credit. To those guys along the offensive mm-hmm. line it feels like maybe that was their best day of the year so uh i'm, I'm gonna go with jackson's answer and say i, I think it was the o-line all right jackson is your jamie's question of the day winner congrats to him clint loses <laughs> again <laughs> all right there's no way i can lose no diggity because i'm presenting it so it's no way no I, but i i think you're right 100 percent diggity that there's no way that he can lose no diggity <laughs> Or win three today. Okay. Just doing sick burns over there to my left. Mm -hmm. Ambulance over here for all these burns. No, from my left. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. I was joking. (laughs) (laughs) Cheeseburger. Uh, I I also think the offensive line, I, I think that they are just collectively playing better, and they have been really since Oklahoma State now there were still some issues but it it just seems like where last year where it just felt like week in and week out you never saw real improvement you've seen that with this group this year because it didn't start out great uh I mean there were some yards that were gained in the in in the uh rushing attack that were almost all on the shoulders of Taj Brooks and Sir Roderick Thompson breaking tackles at or behind the line of scrimmage uh it was quarterback's I mean, specifically Donovan Smith on the run uh, and throwing the ball. And I I think, one, Baron Morton has made quick decisions, but I think the offensive line has just gained confidence. Mm -hmm. Because I thought that they played, again, immensely better at Oklahoma State than they had all all season long. Still some issues, certainly. Uh, And then it grew into what it was West Virginia. And as you mentioned, great in the run game, great with pass protection. Uh, Very... And maybe that's something else that I'm feeling encouraged with as you head into Baylor. We just talked about the confidence level. The, to me, the biggest issue on the team has been getting better instead of just staying bad. Yeah, that's fair. And steps in the right direction. It feels like uh, I, I agree with your point about that you took a step forward against Oklahoma State. Not to say that Barron was completely clean in that game. Obviously, sure. we know he got banged up. But that's a really good and... Um, veteran defensive front that Oklahoma State has. You survived that and and put up decent numbers offensively, and then we just saw more of the same against you know a pretty rough defensive unit from West Virginia. Mm-hmm. So you made them look as bad as just like they have all season long. Well, the part <clears> of that too, though, is is the defensive unit for them hasn't obviously been great, and you took advantage of that, but they still had a. Very good, all Big 12 type defensive lineman that was held completely ineffective yeah. in stills. Uh, and so, again, to the offensive line's credit and to what Jackson said, uh, I think that they just did a terrific job. Great answer, Jackson. Jackson will continue to have more great answers in hour number three. Getting to the point, but taking the scenic route to get there. This is the Bottom Line Podcast from 100.7 The Score. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, it is once again time to play No Diggity. We play it at 2.15 every weekday here on the Bottom Line. You've got us on 100.7 The Score and 107thescore.com. It's that time of day where I throw out a certain situation to Jamie Jackson and you are fine listening audience and with theirs and your digitometers they and you tell us just how much diggity said situation has uh 
As we were going to that break, though, Jamie, before we get to that, I said I had a bone to pick. Uh, I have been begging for you to do a live show for me of the Lil Crouton tennis rap album. Mm -hmm. I believe that's what they actually call trap beats. For how long have we known each other now? Too long. I mean, years? not long. 12 years? 15 years? Minutes? And it takes one Saturday, and you drop like 10 tracks for Jackson. What's up with that? It was glorious. Plant, you, you don't know when the, the fever is going to hit you. Sometimes it just flows out of you. <laughs> you just feel the music? <laughs> Jackson, what did, would you at least were you recording? Always record. Oh. <laughs> Always record. I, I wasn't at the time. I should have though. Yeah. That's your. That's the lesson you've learned today. Always I actually record. just did it, Jackson, just to make Clint jealous. I know. I. You know what's funny? Slash not very funny, to me, as I believe that hundred <laughs> percent, because that's like the first time. The first. I, I see you first thing on Saturday. Uh. And you go, not even a hi. How's your Saturday going? Nice to see you. Stop following. None, like none of that. It was. I rapped for Jackson this morning. You missed it. <laughs> <laughs> I've never ran into a first mm -hmm. thing braggadocious mm -hmm. Jamie before, mm -hmm. and it threw me off. Yep. And then the content. Just You've heard hurt many me. people before. You know, with sign, or you've seen them with signs that say "We'll work for food" or whatever. Uh -huh. I will rap for Jackson. Emotional damage. I think he's about to cry, Jack. You, I will not. You will not see me cry. You will not win today. Uh, this on the chat line. I never told an essay to eat it, but I'm not from Kansas either. All right. Uh, Baron Morton has now had two. Uh, varying from really good to great performances. Uh, first time he gets to start at the Jones. Uh, and you get into the story, too, of, I mean, him feeling awful day of, throwing up, all of that stuff that, you know, people have kind of learned that he went through before the game even started. Uh, getting over a dinged-up leg, but it, it seemed and looked like he's mostly healthy. Uh, to me, you know, still obviously scratching the surface of what he can be as a quarterback, young player. You mentioned, and I agreed, uh, if you, because this is how you get better too. By the way, you 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 know advance and progress on these things. As good as he was, missed a couple of deep throws that seemed a little open. More it seemed more times than not it was to his left side. But other than that, I mean, really good stuff. Yeah, because. If you're just calling that a perfect performance, then he's not getting any better. But I look at this now, and and this was what was waiting around the corner after this is Tyler Shuck uh, starts to get cleared as well. You knew you're going to have another quarterback controversy. We were going to have the same discussion we had preseason slash week three slash week five. But now, from what I've seen, this is your no diggity situation of the day. Baron Morton is your starter for the rest of the season. Um, no diggity as of right now. Okay. Okay. Um, one hundred percent. He's the starter on on Saturday against Baylor. Do I think he will start the rest of the season? I do. I, I think he will be the starter for the rest of the year. Sooner or later, you're going to have a quarterback stay healthy for a little while. Right. Let's go ahead and make it now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, and it, it, again, is... I, I, I think working at a good time for him as well. Y your schedule is still going to be tough because it's Big 12 play, but you're certainly facing... The lighter half of the two from front sure. to back, mm -hmm. uh, and that's going to be helpful. And at the start of the season, 
you know, we, we asked, discussed, who do you want to win? And I think you said the same that I did. I, I wanted it to be Baron from the start just because he's the younger guy and the math there is you get more years. And it, again, it would, in that scenario, him going out and winning it, which ultimately he didn't by week one. Um, but now, you know, due to, I would still say, you know, unfortunate events, you've seen what you can have though with him. And I agree, it feels like it's about time for a quarterback to stay healthy, especially when you're going off to like back to back to back to back seasons where it's just injury, uh, some of them season ending, mm-hmm. some of them a few weeks and throwing off the rotation, all of that. It feels like you're due. Uh, and boy, wouldn't it be great if it would be that in Baron Morton. Jackson, Baron Morton, your starter for the rest of the season. 100% no diggity. I think he's just played too well these last two games to at least not give him this upcoming game. And if, and I think he's probably going to play well enough to keep it the rest of the season if I had mm-hmm. to guess. But I think I think Choice said it this morning this way. He should be your starter till like he shows he can't be. And I think right now he's shown he has. I liked everything you said until you said the word choice. Uh, yeah, and, and this that's what you were looking for for Donovan, right? As he took over for a Tyler Chuck, we, we kept on saying you just want him to go out and, and really take it so – by the time that Chuck does come back, there's not an argument. You go, boy, there's no way that you can take Donovan Smith uh, out from behind center. And he, he didn't do that. No. Um, right. And so now you said the same thing for Baron Morton. And to me, through two games, he's absolutely done that. Yeah, and we have to take into account that <clears throat> West Virginia, definitely the worst defense the Red Raiders have faced so far in the Big oh, 12 Conference. Absolutely. Yep. And so that mm-hmm. factors into how well Barron looked. And But at the same time, Oklahoma State, you would think one of the better defenses mm-hmm. in the conference. And he looked really good in that game, too. I just think that right now your offense looks like it's running well. The team appears that they're kind of rallying behind him. Mm-hmm. They're... they're uh, they're clicking with him in there, so I, I just don't think you mess with that. Well, that's part of it. And, and I, I think when it starts out with Oklahoma State being one of those games, I mean, it's your first start. You were third string. Uh, it was a quarterback competition, but still, you knew where you stood as far as in the coach's eyes at the time. And your first start is in Stillwater, most people's favorite to win the conference. You just saw this with Quinn Ewers go to a hostile environment in that same place and play horribly, mm-hmm. and the moment wasn't too big for him. Yep. And then you answer it by taking care of business against West Virginia. Like You didn't let him hang in there, and that was a team win, but all of that was enough for me to see from Morton, uh, you know, un- unless he takes a complete nosedive, which I don't expect him to. Same here. Uh, I mean, it's his job. Let us know what you think on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Put that mannequin over there in the room. I don't remember that being here. Mm. Looks a lot like Jeff McGuire. <laughs> uh, this from Shelly. Justice for Viking. Weren't we worried you were the next Dahmer like three days ago? No. Jamer put that thought in everyone's head because he was still upset about the Christmas tree. Yeah. And so Unnerved, I think it's the right word. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was a COVID year take versus take win. Uh, this on the chat line, he claims it as asterisked, as do I. Mm, sure. Couldn't have said it better myself. Sure. Uh, yeah, uh, this on the chat line too. I see Tech as a two and a half point favorite. I think you're right. Uh, Baylor lost to West Virginia and gave up 43 points to that team. How are you a 4.7 when we were at home? It's a fair question. Mm-hmm. Fair question. I just think I think Baylor had a bad day. I think they're better than they showed at West Virginia. Mm-hmm. Uh, after this game, I'm 10 out of 10 confident you win against Baylor. Wow. Uh, and this from Shelly, tough MVP call. I'm going with Brooks. We needed an RB our running back to have a solid performance for the rest of the season's momentum and confidence. Yeah, he was certainly going. Mm-hmm. And Sir Roger was coming off a good game there at Oklahoma State too. Hopefully the running game, both of them, continue it. And we'll see if you get a K 
Cameron Valdez actually mixed in too. Heard a lot about him. Haven't seen him yet. Back with more next on 100.7 The Score. This has been the Bottom Line Podcast from 100.7 The Score. Go to 100-7thescore.com for more from the Double T Sports Network.